Greetings, Melvi family. What a privilege it is to come back to you with this episode of Prophecy Outlook. If you remember, we recorded a few of these before, and it's a privilege for us to continue with the final chapters of the book, The Great Controversy. Today, we want to discuss the topic on religious liberty threatened. And particularly, we will be focusing on a subject matter that I know may be a bit touchy to some believers, but we have to outline it because prophecy is very clear that the final religious players will be specific systems and powers. So we're going to talk about the aim of the papacy when it gets involved into global religious uh, worship. And so I just advise you sit back there, listen carefully, and investigate these things and see for yourself if we are speaking the truth. Don't take our word for it. So as we get into this discussion, I'm joined by Brother Noko. Greetings, my brother, and how are you? Thank you so much. I'm well. How are you doing? Very blessed to be here and very grateful to have you with me on this set. Thank you. It's a very loaded question, a very yeah. loaded topic, yeah. and one that perhaps the Lord helping us, we should be able to understand what we are dealing with. And the book of The Great Controversy gets into some detail mm -hmm. to warn us about things that are coming. If you could pray for us as we begin. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, dear Lord. You've allowed us to meet here. You've also allowed us to meet virtually. I pray for our hearers, our listeners. I pray for us as we do this presentation. Please be with us, dear Lord, as we delve into these uh, wonderful topics on the liberties threatened, the liberty of our conscience threatened. Yeah. We pray for forgiveness of sin where we have erred. Have mercy upon us, dear Lord. We are not by any means special, but you have chosen us, dear Lord, men with flaws, men with weaknesses, and you've entrusted us with this all-important message. Have mercy upon us, dear Lord. As we now delve into this study, be with us, grant the full measure of your Holy Spirit. Mm. This is my humble prayer, in your mighty name. Amen. 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 So, religious liberty under threat. Yeah. Why is this important for us to discuss it? And what are what is involved here? Oh I think the first thing that we need to to look at and maybe remind ourselves, it's nothing new, mm. is that God has given us free will. Mm. God, well, the, 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 the children, the adventurers, the pathfinders, the children like to sing this song. God is a gentleman. He yeah. doesn't force his way in. Mm. And uh, because God is, has been this kind to us, he gives us uh, free, freedom to worship, mm. gives us religious liberty. He gives us the option to accept him as our Lord and Savior or not to accept him as Lord and Savior. Mm. So with all these uh, benefits associated with, uh, with the liberty of the conscience, we should worship and thank the Lord that mm. we can do these things. Unfortunately, as a, as a, as a title, chapter 35 of this book is um, entitled, This Liberty, the Freedom of Worship, is now under threat. Mm. Our free will mm. is now under threat. Mm. So it's important for us to go through the study, to go through this and to see how exactly it has been threatened. Some of us may not know that we're, our, our, our liberties are, are, are at threat. So the mm. study seeks to expose um, these, these, these threatening factors so that we do make an intelligent decision. We do appreciate how loving our God is as we worship him. Now, I have not missed the fact that we, as we discuss religious liberty under threat or being threatened, the, the key players involved are spoken about very succinctly, mm -hmm. clearly. And I know to some people who might be listening here, they might be aggravated by the fact that we are sitting here to discuss others when actually we should be focusing on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that can be a problem for some. But I think for me, I couldn't miss the fact that the threat is not far from within. Yeah. The threat for religious liberty is going to be using elements and players who are within our own space. And I think I want us to distinguish between a system mm -hmm. and an individual in the system. Yeah. Because it's always like that. Yeah. 
True, true. Yeah. And we shouldn't throw the baby with the water Packets. and the, <laughs> you know, as, as the proverbial statement says, yeah. throwing away the, the, the dish and the water and the baby. Now, they are obviously liberal. The word liberal is used here in uh-huh. this chapter. A liberal movement in the Protestant churches. Mm-hmm. That seems to be working with the Roman Catholicism mm-hmm. to bring about a change in what we have always known for many, many generations, that God does not force anyone to worship him. Mm-hmm. And religion cannot be legislated because when you do that, and chaos will take place. Yeah, you have destroyed the spirit of Christ. So yeah. walk us through to discover this system, is it really a tolerant system? Is it a persecuting system? Or does it adapt when it suits it for the sake of deceiving? Yeah. What exactly is the modus operandi? Thank you. When, when the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, what shall be the signs that the end is near? Mm. The first thing Christ responds to, verse 4 of Matthew 24, is be careful that no man deceives, deceives you. Mm. So those who love him, whether they're in the church or outside the church, if you fall in the bracket of the people who love God, mm-hmm. if you fall in that bracket, then Christ says, be careful that you're not deceived. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. Whether you're in the church or outside the church, if you're in that bracket of people who love Christ, be careful you're not what? Deceived. deceived. That's his biggest uh, concern. His first and most important warning. Yeah. Is, is deception. Wow. Now, drilling down to the question, what is the connection between uh, liberal movements and uh, relig- religion? Roman Catholicism. Uh, Roman Catholicism more specifically. Well, yeah. let's look at how the systems are set up. They have got a wonderful awe of worship. Take nothing away. Beautiful yeah. worship structures. Oh, yes. Beautiful worship buildings. Yes. Um, there's a great degree of reverence. Make and no mistake decorum, about it. Yeah. And decorum. So take nothing away from there. I I, I I I am personally chuffed and amazed by by by, by that. The music mm. is amazing, it's good. Mm. But that's only a strength they have. There are other things they need which they do not possess. Mm. And hence another religious system has those things. Mm. Miracles, fire fire, mm. doing things that um, other denominations would not be in a position to do. Let me just say, kindly, kindly say it this way, false miracles. Mm. Now, we have seen that these false miracles, these miracle working activities have been able to draw numbers mm-hmm. successfully. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, Jesus Christ does also say, even though this uh, healing is taking place in your life, right, and the healing was a result of a false prophet, Christ says, it's your faith that healed you. Mm. Right. Mm. So whilst I do appreciate that there are false ministers, there are false worshippers, there are false Christ, there are false prophets, there are false miracles, the Bible says those things do exist. Mm. Somebody may have a genuine experience whereby I really had this problem and I was healed from it by Pastor XYZ. Now, my, my advice to such a person is, yes, you were healed. Yes, you had this problem. Mm-hmm. But it was your faith, mm. not the work of the false individual. So mm. that needs to be very, very clear from the from the get go. That yeah. when you were rescued from whatever impalement you're going through, mm-hmm. it was because of your faith. Mm. Now, having said that, put that aside. These false miracles, these false healing activities that take place in these systems, mm-hmm. when brought together with the amazing awe of the Catholic worship system, when brought together, will draw numbers in greater mass. Mm. Right? Unfortunately, the Bible warns us that. With the beauty of all of these things, within it is deception Deception. and falsehoods lying Mm. within it. And those things will not easily be picked unless you make an effort to study the scriptures for yourself so that you know what the Lord desires of you and what the Lord expects of you. Mm. So can we make a distinction then between the system and its members? We should actually, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and it looks like from the write-up here, we should be because that's where the insensitivities come in and the mm-hmm. spirit of persecution is awakened. Yeah. All right. When we begin to name call and the 
the system operates separate to the individual. Yes. But an individual chooses to align themselves to that system. Yeah. Which is why we believe that the call in Revelation chapter 18, mm -hmm. God makes it clear that his children in the end of time cannot be associated with the error, okay, and the, the, the false doctrine. And, and maybe help me to understand, and maybe our listeners out there, how do we make that distinction between a system mm -hmm. of error and a member who's under the system of error but still being a true worshipper of God? Okay. Allow me to, 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 to read uh, uh, two passages of Scripture, maybe one, mm -hmm. but let me just look at these two. Yeah. Um, the question is, how do we draw the line, where do we draw the separation? Mm. Right. Ezekiel 29. Ezekiel 29. Yes. Verse right. 3. Mm -hmm. Right? I want you to look at the players in this verse. Yes. Right, let's go. 29 verse 3. Yes. Yeah. Speak and say, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, mm -hmm. the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which has said, My river is mine. Mm -hmm. And I have made it for myself. Right. We have got two players here. Mm. We have Pharaoh, who is yes, the king, king of, of Egypt. Egypt. So mm -hmm. he, there's a person called Pharaoh, mm -hmm. and he holds an office of king. Mm -hmm. Then we have another player called the dragon. And mm. where does this dragon lie? In, In the, the midst seas. of the river, of his rivers. I want to suggest to you and the hearer that this dragon here in Ezekiel 29 verse 3 is the same dragon in Revelation 12. Yes. Right? So the two players are the dragon who is Satan. Mm. And then we have Pharaoh who is king, the king of, of Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Right. What is God's problem here? He says, you, Pharaoh, mm -hmm. are the dragon. Mm. So he says, your office position the position you hold as king of Egypt, mm -hmm. right? The way you behave as king of Egypt mm -hmm. is similar or synonymous to the dragon of Revelation 12. All right. So I'm now, what do they say? Inferring in scripture now. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not adding, I'm just inferring into scripture. All right. If Pharaoh were to repent uh -huh. and stop behaving like the dragon, God would not call him a dragon. Okay. Right? Because God's issue, God's enemy here is a dragon. Now, if you go to John chapter 8, verse 48, mm -hmm. I hope I got that correct. John 8, verse 48. Mm -hmm. uh, Christ gives a similar analogy, uh, which we need. By the way, when you do Bible study, you don't reuse one verse. You need yeah. to... Um, yeah, a little and there, a little bit. Yes. Yes. Let's see. Did I get the verses correct? Verse 48, yes. No, verse 44. 44. Mm -hmm. okay. Verse 44. It says here, yeah, you are of your father, the uh -huh. devil, and the last of your father will you do. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Mm -hmm. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own word. For he is a liar and the father of it. Right. So Jesus is here, he's talking to the Pharisees. Mm. And he has categorically said to the Pharisees, mm. you, you are, are of, of your, your father, father, who? The, the devil. devil. But when we make the Lord's Prayer, what do we say? Our Father in heaven. So God has denied the Pharisees mm. as his children because they are behaving like who? The like devil. You, like Satan, yes. Yeah. But we also know that there's some Pharisees, Paul being one of them, mm -hmm. right? Joseph of Arimathea being another one. Mm -hmm. We know some Pharisees who did not behave like the devil, and therefore Christ cannot call such a person a devil or a mm. devil's person, right? So mm. when we when 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 Christ says, let's separate between the system mm -hmm. and the individual, it has to do with your personal alignment to the system okay. or your movement away from the system. Mm. If the Pharisees were to repent, yeah. Christ would not call them what? Your children of the devil. Of the devil. Right. All right. So the enemy here is a devil. There's no need to, 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 to debate that. Mm -hmm. But when we align ourselves to the mission of the devil, when we align ourselves to the philosophy and the thought process of the devil, mm. God has no choice, sad to say, 
but to say you are of your father, mm. the devil. Hence the call of Revelation 18 that you have made, that you made allu- uh, um, uh, 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 alluding to. Yeah. Come out of her, mm. my people. Mm. Right. So the God, God says, there are my people there. Come out of them. So yes, there is a separation. God wants that separation. Even within our own church, if, 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 if I behave like the devil, if mm. I align myself to the devil's philosophy, regardless of where I, 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 I worship, God now places me as a child of mm. the devil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact, not only are you now the child of the devil, mm. if you look at Revelation chapter 18, mm-hmm. uh, verse 4, mm-hmm. says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, that's Babylon, mm-hmm. my people, that you may not, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Yes. So that call to come out means God does not support that system. Yes. And his children must definitely be brought out. I think also if we can read Ephesians chapter 5, it does bring out a very powerful thought mm-hmm. around how do we operate between the member mm-hmm. And the church, verse 7. Ephesians chapter? 5. Right. Verse, uh, verse 7, 8, 9, and, um, and 11. All right. Ephesians chapter 5, mm-hmm. verse 7. Yes. Be ye, not, mm-hmm. be ye not therefore partakers with them. All right. For ye are sometimes, for ye were sometimes in darkness, mm-hmm. but now you are in the light. Mm. Walk as a children of the light. Yes. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Yes. Proving what is acceptable to Mm. the Lord. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather reprove them. Mm. So so the member is called to separate from systems that are fallen. Yes. And to have nothing to do with it. Yes. So as much as we may point the system... Mm-hmm. and its errors, mm-hmm. the intention is to show the member mm-hmm. that you cannot be associated with that. Yes. Because Revelation 18, God says, don't partake of his sins. Mm-hmm. Because when you do, and I come to judge, I will not distinguish yes. between the system and the individual. True. Remember Nineveh? Yes. Jonah's message? Yes. Wait, after Jonah preached, who led the repentance of Nineveh? It was the king himself. The king himself. Yeah. That's why my earlier assertion was, if Pharaoh were to repent, just like the yes. king of Nineveh repented, mm. then, like you said, the judgments would not, would not, would not come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there is a need to separate between mm. the member and the system because God is ready against the system. He yeah. knows that he has destroyed the system, but mm. as you keep holding on to that foreign system, unfortunately, as God destroys the system, yeah. the system destroys you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we see in the book of Revelation that there is a particular plague. We're not going to focus on it now, mm-hmm. but there's a particular plague that's directed at that system. The yeah. whole of chapter uh, 17 show us the judgment of that system. Yeah. All right, with, with plagues and, and, and the like. Mm. And so what I then see happening here is that God is more interested in the salvation of individuals that we will be saved as individuals. Yes. Not, not as members of church bodies mm-hmm. or some governing systems. God wants to save whosoever believes in him. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the system itself. Okay. That 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 the, the book of the Great Controversy talks about when it talks about religious liberty under threat. Right. It says that this system of the Roman Catholic Church has been in power before. Yes. And we know its character from what it did in the past. Mm-hmm. The question therefore is when Protestants who get their name Protestant from protesting against the teachings of Rome, when they unite with that system, Mm -hmm. what is the impact of that union? Hence the title, Mm -hmm. Religious Liberty Under Threat. Because the objective of the Roman Church 
as portrayed in that chapter is to regain control of the whole world and re-establish a draconian rule that says whoever does not teach and live and practice like the system teaches must be removed. And it will use not only itself, but it will use the false prophet Mm -hmm. to do that bidding. And it says here, therefore, the growth of the of Catholic churches. And and again, it speaks very blatantly and very Mm -hmm. clearly Mm -hmm. without having to mince this institution. And I know there are other videos we've done on this channel to really explain why and how we arrive at the Roman church in our teaching of Daniel chapter 7, the little horn power, Mm -hmm. as well as Revelation chapter 13, the first beast. Mm -hmm. And so its growth in terms of educational systems and the rise of ritualism and the conversions to Catholicism are cited as indicators that that church is advancing in power and influence. Mm-hmm. And that these developments where they are gaining popularity is actually the, e- the reason why they need to be respected and members need to hear what they have to say. Mm-hmm. So we are dealing with a situation where They are instituting a worship system. Like you mentioned in your opening statements, it's it's a grand system. Mm -hmm. It's well decorated and it's fully structured. And I've never seen a poor looking cathedral of this church. Everywhere Mm. they build churches, they are grand. Mm. They are massive. And so how can you turn around and say, this is error? which is exactly what the disciples came mm-hmm. to Jesus asking, when shall the end of the world be? Mm-hmm. What do you mean that no stone shall be left, you know, not on top of the other? No. Mm-hmm. When shall these things be? So there seems to be a disbelief among people that this system actually can be destroyed and it is not serving God. Mm-hmm. And the challenge, therefore, is when we get this appeal of this big system, mm-hmm. How do we help our members to realize that religion, true religion, has nothing to do with the external display? And that uh, we may be drawn to the true heart worship, Mm -hmm. not to worship in a grand church and think that that's going (laughs) to give you favor with God. It's not about worshiping in a grand cathedral, Uh but truth and obeying God. Your thoughts on that? That's uh, quite heavy. I'm actually looking for a verse. Mm-hmm. I, I hope I'll, I'll find it. Soon. What does it say? Um, I'll, I'll ask for forgiveness. I'll paraphrase it. Mm-hmm. I'll paraphrase it. It says something along these lines. It's in the book of John. Mm-hmm. Be careful of the religious leaders who persecute you. Mm-hmm. Thinking they do God a service. service yes. Right. So Christ warns us, and he's not he, he's not missing mm. his words, that this is not an issue of those outside. Yeah. It's an issue of our religious leaders mm. who will persecute you and me. And their act of persecuting you and me is because they think they are doing God, God a, a service. A service. Yes. Now, that's my, my introductory verse. Now let's come in and, mm-hmm. and, and, and answer mm-hmm. you more specifically there. Yeah, when our religious systems and our religious leaders have made worship very appealing, mm. and they've made worship very attractive, mm. and they've made worship so inviting, and they baptize all of these worship structures, both physical, inanimate, and so forth. When they baptize all these things, to you and I, with uh, with, with with our eyes, we say, "This is." the Lord's way. We will come to that conclusion. Mm. right? Mm. To go a step further, the preacher will say, uh, bring your tithes into the storehouse and see if I will not what bless you. Yeah. And you indeed bring these tithes and offerings to the storehouse and somehow indeed you are now moving with the latest vehicles mm. because you are a member of this particular religious construct. When, when, when you see healing taking place to say, come, our pastor, what will heal you? And sure enough, you get healed the mindset will quickly conclude based on the weight of that evidence mm. that this is the way to, 
to go. Mind you, by the way, mm-hmm. you do know that evidence can be doctored, eh? So if evidence is doctored or if evidence is flawed, despite its weight, mm. it can lead you and me into, into error. Yeah. So the yeah. magnificent buildings, the amazing worship structures, the, mm. the, the miracles that are taking place here are almost certain going to invite you and lead you to a religious conclusion that this is the way to go. And Christ even warns us in the book of Matthew that mm-hmm. even the elect will be deceived. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when you put all this weight of evidence together with the, the, the physical uh, infrastructure supporting it, Mm. There'll be every reason for me to say, let's go that route. Mm. But the scriptures warn us to yeah. say, this is not what the Lord mm. has. Mm. Are we saying that God wants us to have rundown churches? No. Are we saying God wants us to have poor structures? No. Mm. But he's saying, let those not be the basis of mm. your decision making to say, because of these things, this is going to be the true church of God. Mm. Mm. It reminds me of um, mm. Eliab. Eliab, the brother to David. Uh-huh. Samuel comes in for the anointing. Jesse has lined up all his sons and yeah. looks at this brother. He had the stature. Uh-huh. He had the looks. Uh-huh. He had the presence of a king. Uh-huh. And Samuel was going to anoint him because he says in his heart, surely the anointed of him. the Lord is before me. Uh-huh. And then he is told by the Lord, no, I have rejected him. Yeah. He's not the one. So finally, all of them are passed. So who's the king? Yeah. Only this radish boy who's in the field and mm-hmm. rugged is the is the king. So the, 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 this chapter seems to say this outward splendor, pomp, and ceremony in worship may captivate the senses and the emotions of individuals, yeah. like you mentioned, leading them to focus more on the external display rather than on the captivate than cultivating a deeper personal relationship with God. Yeah. And so the emphasis on these external rituals and sensory experience does tend to overshadow the essence of worshiping God. Yeah. And the challenge there is that we may end up not being sincere and being humble mm-hmm. in our experience with God. And what is therefore the issue is how do we handle this system? Because there are definitely objectionable features, yeah, all right, in this system. And the question then is how do we, as Bible students and teachers of truth, debunk that system because someone might accuse us of just hating it yeah but surely there must be practices in that system that clearly show that it is not of god all right perhaps we could walk through a few of those right so let's go to ezekiel 28 verse 1 and then we also look at ezekiel 28 verse Mm -hmm. 9 i'll start uh, my my discourse from those two verses Ezekiel 28, verse verse 1. Let me get, let me make sure I have learned the correct verse. Mm-hmm. Ezekiel 28, verse 1 and 2. All right. Yeah. Um, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, mm-hmm. say unto the prince of Tyrus, mm-hmm. Thus says the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. Mm-hmm. I sit in the seat of God and in the midst of the seas. Mm-hmm. Yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart in the, as the heart of God. Verse 9, jump to verse 9. Will thou yet say before him that, say, that slays thee, I am God, but thou shalt but thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayed thee. So here there's a situation that God has given us. There's an entity called Tyra mm-hmm. that has placed itself in the position of God. Mm. And God says, You are not God, you're just a simple human being like mm. all others. Right? Mm. Now what does this person do who has placed himself 
in the position of God. Yeah. The Th- Thessalonians goes on to say, you uh, appeal to people as though you're God, you bring people to mm. you as though you are a God. Now, here's now go to the, the issue here. Yeah. When I sin, my first point of call is Jehovah. Mm. I confess my sins to God mm. and Him alone. Mm. Right? Mm. And I believe that He will take my sins and cast them into the depths of the sea. Mm. Unfortunately, with this religious entity, you bring your sins to a fellow human being. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is not what the Lord expects mm-hmm. of you and me. We are supposed to bring our sins strictly mm-hmm. to God, not to a fellow human being. Mm-hmm. Right? Number two, because of that, we have now placed this human being yeah. at the level of God. Mm-hmm. And God already condemns that in Ezekiel 29. Say you can in Ezekiel 28, sorry. You yes. cannot put yourself as God. As God. Point number mm. three. The Pharisees in the book of John themselves yes. acknowledge a separation between man and God. Mm. When they accused Christ, say, How can you, being a man, say you are a God? God? Right? Because only God forgive mm. sins. So in terms of the theology, the Pharisees were quite correct. Only God does forgive sins. Yes. But you are a man mm. and you have said your sins are forgiven. How can you do that? That's mm. blasphemy. Mm. So that is one of the major headaches from a, a, a spiritual point of view whereby I as a human being, my sister as a human being, my brother as a human being, my mother, my father, as human beings, they mm. go to another human being and confess their sins. God says no to that. Yeah. Only God can forgive sins. Mm. Therefore, what have you done? Point number three. Mm-hmm. You have brought down God to a level of a human. Yes. Isaiah says, I am God and there's mm. none like me. You cannot say I am yeah. like you, a human being. Mm. My thoughts are not the, like And he thoughts. says, my glory will I share with, with no, no one. one. Uh-huh. So these things are indirectly and imperceptibly bringing the, the idea of God lower and lower and mm. lower that of a human mm. being. Mm. Look at what Moses did. No, yeah. not Moses. Aaron. Mm-hmm. If you read the text very carefully when they made the golden calves, mm-hmm. Aaron says, Behold your God. Referring to the calf. Mm. Who is, brought yeah. you out of the land of Egypt. Mm. And God took exception to that. He was not in prayer. He said, no, no, no. Yeah. There's no cow that put people out. I am the one who did that. And we know what happened to the the, the, the children of Israel that yeah. night. They lost thousands mm. of them who were killed. Yes. That, it's actually a miracle how Aaron mm. survived that. Yeah. So true. So this is the situation that, 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 that mm. the, the system has done. That's why in our opening remarks we said we cannot align ourselves to a situation or a system that will put me in the front, in the firing line of God's big gun. I mm. can't do that. Not in mm. good conscience. Mm. <laughs> Wow. Mm. So so it so the system itself debases manhood mm-hmm. in the sense that you are forced to confess your sins to another human being, mm-hmm. which is really degrading you because you've because God has given us full access to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he says, Let everyone who who calls on me, okay, come. And he says, Whoever believes in me. Mm-hmm. Should not perish, mm-hmm. and so Jesus dispenses full salvation. Yeah. But this system comes in between and says, "Ah, you can't get it from Jesus. We have to give it to, to you. you." Yes, and so that's that's actually debasing individuals and lowering their standards of character, yeah. and degrading their noble instinct. Yeah. Then, like you mentioned, definitely the the view of who God is gets distorted. Yeah. So, this now leads us to a new problem. Yeah. If my view of God is distorted, right, therefore when I see God doing something in a way which contradicts my messed up view, yeah. I now see a tyrant. Yes, yes. I see a God who mm-hmm. cannot be thirst of spilling blood, mm-hmm. killing millions and watching us suffer here on earth. Mm-hmm. Why did you bring the devil here on earth? We no longer mm-hmm. see him as a loving as God. A God. Exactly. Yeah. We see that the distortion that's now created is, this is something I want to question. It doesn't make sense for this to be the God. Mm-hmm. Therefore, because of this distortion, yeah. my faith now goes Drifts elsewhere. Else, yeah. Yeah. In fact, in the end, 
we end up worshiping the creature exactly more than god more than god exactly we now think that nature which is really the hallmark of pantheism mm-hmm. you know many gods for different things the one god ceases to be a real god in fact they would think we are so poor uh-huh. to have one god <laughs> you should have more go, yeah. more gods and 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 also the fact that this system teaches the, the 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 that the law of god has been removed we no longer need to keep it that is responsible for much of the self indulgence that is there yeah and also the same system when it denies people a god given right to live and exercise their feelings and procreate using systems that God has given them mm-hmm. they actually are perpetuating immorality yeah because one of the things we have discovered is that when you deny people the right to to marriage and a right to copulation mm-hmm. you end up with a scandalous system of people who are trying to meet the same needs yeah. but in a very yeah, perverted wrong. way yes. that's actually one of the results of self indulgence and therefore one of the things also we noted was if you denounce god's way you will establish a worship system that has got systems that are against god yeah i mean look at people now being told to pay uh, uh, uh indulgences and get certificates for their dead loved ones to be ushered into heaven when because they died unbelieving yes. what 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 is that uh, that's exactly where we are about to go to on the issue of indulgence mm. look at it from this other point of view before we come back to that one yeah i can make a prepayment for sin mm. <laughs> I, maybe i'm going a bit off but let me explain myself i've yeah. done wrong yes right one type of wrong or the other and the system says to me there is a, a, a price that must be paid mm. as part of the process of cleansing you from that 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 that, that, uh, that wrong you have done mm. and i make a payment for uh, mm. for, for that mm. now let's assume i'm using those, my words very carefully yeah. let's assume yeah. I, i i am not genuine in my in my in my in my confession mm-hmm. i'm not genuine mm-hmm. but i do know that if i maintain my mis, my misguided behavior i will burn in hell and the church is saying for you not to burn in hell right you need to be rescued through an indulgence process mm. right so i think mm. as a, as, a, as a good accountant to say no why 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 go through that route yet i can make an advance payment mm-hmm. to say in the event in the event i do wrong i I've, I've, i've covered my sin with this payment yeah right yeah. This, this remember this is an assumption that i am yeah. completely uh what's the word i'm mm-hmm. looking for I'm repented. Yes. I'm just I'm just trying to avoid burning in hell. Mm. Yes. So I'm going to have to pay this uh-huh. so that when I when I finally get into hell my exit is already paid for. Exactly. And, and that actually is replacing uh-huh. the blood of Jesus. Exactly. As the only uh agent that God has ordained for freeing us. Yes. Cuz only his way is the way we are we are saved. Yeah. Then yeah. on the other issue that you mentioned, maybe just to remind me, you you had talked about indulgence as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's indulgence, mm-hmm. there's penance, mm-hmm. uh, which actually is confessing your sins and, and getting that certificate to say, I am going to renounce my sin, but if should I go to hell, this must pay me into. Uh-huh. Which is really saying there's there's life after death. Yeah. Your, your 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 life can be corrected even after you are after dead. dead. Yeah. yeah. But but the church then teaches a gospel that denies the efficacy of the sacrifice of Jesus and through self indulgence people are then settled in a deceived state mm-hmm. of affairs yeah. of thinking that they are actually believing the gospel but actually all they are forced to do is externals mm-hmm. externals and denying people the right to live a god given life and i guess that's what paul writes to say be careful in the last days shall come people who will be denying you to eat certain foods and to live in a certain way mm-hmm. 
and denying the power of the gospel. So the whole system becomes a deceiving system. Mm-hmm. All right? And because we are tracking and tracing the threat to religious liberty, what I think then becomes very critical is for us to look at what does this book actually talk about uh, when it compares what this movement is doing and what we can learn from the old Jewish church. Mm-hmm. Because remember, the old Jewish church had a particular way they acted with Jesus. Mm-hmm until they go to a point where they said it is better for one man to die, die. <laughs> than for the whole nation to yeah. perish. And plans were put in place and schemes were developed and Christ was now wanted, live or dead. Or dead. Okay. That verse up to now gives me the spooks that somebody would actually go out of his way to, to, to exterminate one person, in this case being Christ. It really gives me the, the, the spooks. Now, what had led that? There were norms that had been created by the Jewish leaders then, mm-hmm. norms that left them in a state of comfort as leaders and in a state of comfort as, as members of the then church. Mm. Right? Those norms, when you study them, were not in harmony with the, the scriptures, a few, yeah. a few, a few examples. Basic mm-hmm. examples I can mm-hmm. give you mm-hmm. is don't don't carry your mat on the Sabbath. Christ mm-hmm. was accused of saying, "Why are you telling this person to to carry a mat on Sabbath?" Yeah. Another example is Christ healing on the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Uh, a third example is uh, don't carry mat healing on the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are hungry, like the lesson we had a few a few days yeah. ago. You're hungry. You go to the the field. You take some corn some from corn. the field. Yeah. Right. So they had put laws. Right. And even they, eating bread without washing your hands. hands. That's another incident. So they well. had put laws to yeah. keep them in a state of, of comfort. So when Christ came to correct that, mm. it was a discomfort to them. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. To a serious discomfort to them. And they saw themselves at threat in mm. their positions. Yeah. Hence the statement to say, you better remove this one person here rather than entire... And save the whole system. Right. <laughs> Bring that now to where we are now. Yeah. We have the three angels' message that God has given us. We mm. have the message of Christ coming a second time that he has given us. So the message of righteousness by faith and faith alone mm. that Christ has given us. This is a very unsettling message. Mm. It brings people out of their comfort zones. The the young prince. Christ yes. says to the young prince, yes. okay, you've kept the law, all well and good. Go and do this extra thing. And the Bible says he went away. Sorrowful. Yeah, yeah. Sorrowful. And the message of Christ today mm. has the same effect. Mm. Can you imagine after going through the, 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 the grandeur of the structures, the music, the worship system, the healings and what have you, and mm. then you say to them, come out of that fallen system. Mm. You will be indeed sorrowful. No, I can't do that. I can't. Mm. No, it doesn't make sense. Mm. It leaves a state of, of discomfort. And eventually over time, which I think we'll look at a bit later, eventually yeah. over time, yeah. Somebody will say, listen, these people with this message, Mm. for the sake of protecting our structures right now, Mm -hmm. have to be removed. Mm. Mm. To protect the structures. Yes. Mm. So so obviously there is an emphasis on outward regos and performances. Mm -hmm. And inwardly, you carry hypocrisies. And then you establish, just like the Jewish leaders, mm. so many rules were put in place and Jesus says you can't even lift your finger to help the poor. poor. So too many do's and don'ts Don't. and rules and regulations and all of that. And obviously exaltation of human traditions was another thing I noted. Yeah. They said your, your your disciples are eating eating bread, not even pork. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they are eating bread with unwashed <laughs> hands. hands. And Jesus says it doesn't defile. Mm-hmm. What really defiles is what comes from your heart, your mm-hmm. spirit. And so these elements uh, are, are, are now very visible in, a, in, in that situation. But also this chapter talks about Satan taking his attributes and making them look like the attributes of God. Mm -hmm. And he used false conceptions of God to lead to cruel practices and then blame them on God. God, yeah. Amazing. And so the question there is, in what ways 
has this is this system working towards blaming those who keep God's law and 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 identifying them as the problem okay. instead of it as a system that sits in the temple and claims to be infallible mm-hmm. and its leader is the is the vicar or is the representative of Christ that's hypocrisy it is highest order of pointing a finger at someone and saying you are the one who's wrong you are the one to be removed when actually it's me who's the system mm-hmm. and it's definitely a system of hypocrisy there if you get time uh, may you see and also to our readers look for a book called uh, Fox's book of martyrs mm. right mm. it gives you the entire history of people who were, were murdered yeah. killed yeah. put on the stake yeah burnt uh, burnt you mm. name it it gives you the entire history of, of 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 what happened and who did that and who did those things yeah. right if you if, if you can't access that book then maybe watch a, a, a couple of these movies that are are ongoing whereby you've got uh, warriors fighting the and they're placing enemies on a stake, putting them. This is mm. what happened back mm. in those days. Yeah. Right? These are things which, according to John, they think they do God a, what, a service. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what was happening yeah. in those historical days then is people who pointed to the scriptures were mm-hmm. deemed as heretics. Mm. The definition of a heretic then, not now, then was anybody who speaks against what the, the church teaches yeah. then. Yeah. So if you spoke against that, mm. you were a heretic. And because a church did not have civil authority to execute somebody, mm. they would then need civil permission yeah. to have a person executed. Yeah. Right? What do we have there? A union of church and, and state. state. All right. right. So they sought civil permission to execute mm. those things. Now then in those days, they didn't need permission. Yeah. Because yeah. the prophecy says to us, the kings handed over their seat, mm. rule, and authority to the, the church. So the yes. church now could execute those things yeah. at, the, at that time. Mm. And it is said that they would say, we are doing these things in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We are doing these things in the name of God. Yeah. You are here disturbing our order of worship. You mm. are here disturbing our theology. You are here disturbing these things. Just like they did with... Uh, What's this guy's name? Stephen. Mm-hmm. Stephen disturbed the order of things until yeah. Yeah. they had to stone him. Mm. And they said, we are doing these things because God must be honored. Mm. Mm. And that's exactly the point yeah. you raise. This is the devil's character. Exactly. But he says, no, this is God who's doing yeah. these things. He's the one who's, who's, who's instructing these things to be done. In, in fact, the reason why Africans today mm-hmm. in Africa hate Christianity mm-hmm. is because when it came to Africa, it came with exactly the same traits. Yeah. The Bible was used to hoodwink people. Uh-huh. And so people look at this Bible and then say, whoever brought it was yeah. evil and therefore this book is evil. We yeah. don't want it. We and don't. now mm-hmm. there is a call for Africans to reject this Christianity of yours yeah. because it has nothing to do with our lineage and our ancestors and we're going back to our indigenous knowledge which is a deception Mm -hmm. because the image of god was brought to africa in a distorted manner Uh so while some africans may have a justification for behaving that way it's actually the completeness of the devil's experiment to say this is what god has done Mm -hmm. and you are in this state because of his religion or his, his work. And so the other sad thing around this is how hidden practices were incorporated into spiritual practices. Mm-hmm. And through enculturation, through bringing in other traditions, this system has actually established a syncretistic way of worshipping. To say it's okay to do your traditional, Mm -hmm. but you can also do the religious. And when you look at some of the other practices, which I think you've mentioned, the the inquisition and persecution becomes the default position for a a fallen system. It will persecute because it can only maintain its authority by force. 
yeah. whereas God maintains his by love. Now, there's also a growing level of religious intolerance, mm. divergent views. And what that means is, historically, you have always had a situation where the system claimed, claimed infallibility. Can't make a mistake. So when, when the Pope spoke, that was the voice of God. Mm-hmm. Whoever opposes it will have to be bent at the stake and killed. And many martyrs. In this book of the Great Controversy, if you read the early chapters, it goes into detail. Of all of these men, the Martin Luthers, the Zwingels, yes, the Kelvins, the mm. Ulrichs, and all of them yeah. that were burned and killed. Some of them were even killed, and then they were dug up and, and burned. burned again. Yeah, and throw their bones thrown into rivers. Mm. And in England, the same thing happens. Mm. Okay, people are persecuted. So when someone comes and then says, "This is a book of men," I don't believe it. Yet there are people of nations and kindreds and tongues who were killed yeah. because of their... And we see them on the sixth seal, the fifth seal yeah. of Revelation. Souls under the, the altar, altar crying out, How long, O Lord, shall it be before you avenge of our blood? Yeah. And the garment was given to them and told, Wait a little bit until some of your brothers are also yeah. killed. In that manner. Yes. So this is the system that persecute and that intolerance will quickly move to persecution and killing. Can I tread on very dangerous waters here? I love At your God. own risk. <laughs> <laughs> I love my God. Um, yeah. I want to respect my God. Yeah. Matthew 12, Christ says, speak against God, you can be forgiven. Mm. Speak against heaven, mm. you can be forgiven. Speak against Christ, you can be forgiven. Yeah. But don't speak against the Holy Spirit. Mm. Now, this is not a lesson as to what the unpardonable sin is, no. But here, we're looking at the character of Christ mm-hmm. versus the character of, of the devil. Mm-hmm. The character of Christ allows you, like I said, I'm, I'm treating very carefully here. Yes. The character of Christ allows you, according to Matthew 12, to speak against heaven, to speak against God, to speak against Jesus Christ. Mm. And upon repentance in the future, you will be forgiven for that. Yes. But when you speak against the leader of this religious uh, situation, when you speak against the devil, mm. religious intolerance says, exterminate immediately. Mm. What am I bringing out here? Christ has given us free will. Yeah. Right? And whilst free will may have adverse consequences if you choose wrongly, Christ does not make you feel bad for making that choice. Mm. Whereas on the other on the other side, free will is not there. Yeah, you can't speak against your leader. The the the, the, the work and the words of your religious leader there mm. is as good as the work and the words of of God. Yeah. Now, yeah. whilst it is true we should respect our leaders, make no mistake about it, we should. Mm. It is different from putting them in the position of God or idolizing them. Yeah. If my religious leader gives a, a, a what do you call this thing, on the pulpit, something which is doctrinally not mm. correct, mm. the Bible does permit me with respect to approach that leader and say, here you may have misfired in terms of the message. Yeah. The other yeah. side, you don't have that option. Mm. What has been said yeah. is golden, end of story. The leader is not fallible. The he leader is not infallible. fallible. Exactly. He cannot make mistakes. He can't make mistakes. Mm. Even though sometimes the, 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 the message is very clear. Mm. Very, very clear. This thing is completely off. You can't speak against the leader. He can't correct the leader. So what God has done for us by saying this is the way he wants to be worshipped, he has given us some degree of freedom to say, choose, mm-hmm. think carefully. Mm-hmm. I will not automatically beat you the big stick because I, I you didn't choose me. Mm. But your bad choice will lead to these consequences. Be yeah. aware of them. But the yeah. other side, yeah, that's it. Yeah, do or die. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so I think overall, the false attribution of cruelty to God by Satan is actually what has influenced most of the violence, the coercion, and the intolerance we see 
both in heathen societies mm -hmm. and even in countries or certain te territories where faith has been present. The other aspect this chapter brings about, which I found quite fascinating, remember the prophecy by Daniel, mm -hmm. you know, knowledge shall increase, yes. Daniel 12. Yes. You know, I mean, men shall run to and fro. Mm -hmm. This chapter seems to tell us that we must not be fooled by this seemingly increase in knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. and enlightenment. And we think that it therefore means this old system has changed and there's not going to be intolerance in the future. The future. Mm -hmm. But actually the opposite is true. Yeah. In this chapter, uh, in terms of misuse of intellectual advancements to drive their agenda home, there's talk about you know false science that undermines faith, yes. the acceptance of certain theories mm -hmm. and teachings that are against the word of God. God. For example, the theory of evolution, yes, and also certain historic patterns that we are seeing, uh, which are driving around spiritualism, and also around superstition, and and manipulation of systems, whether political, economic, and social, for the purposes of destroying mm -hmm. faith in God. Yeah. You know, um, the Spirit of Prophecy, the author of the Great Controversy, has warned in other books that we must be very careful mm. about the pleasantries. She's that word, pleasantries, sophistries, yeah. yes. uh, philosophies of, of, of learned men. Aha. Uh -huh. Does she say don't be learned? Does she say don't be no. learned? No, she doesn't say that. No. She encourages us to to mm. excel in terms of our of our education. Mm. The problem now takes place when that education becomes what corrupted. Mm. So yeah. here yeah. I am. Yeah. Um, say I'm a doctor, professor in in something. I'm I'm, I'm in the in the academic world. I become a, an authority. Mm. Those are the words that, that that we use. Yeah. So when this authority says something. You can mm. cite him, you can refer to him, you can actually say, this person said this thing. So mm. the warning now is, if a man of authoritative figure says something because of their learned status, yeah. and that is against what the, the scriptures teach, mm. then we should be very careful. Yeah. Right? That's In the, fact, we should run. We should run. <laughs> so those are the dangers run, of, of, yeah. of intellectual advancements, especially mm. if they are in the hands of unconverted uh, yeah. individuals. Yeah. They can really do a lot of damage and some of the best universities in this world are actually run by this system yes very true and they are responsible for teaching the greatest of minds mm -hmm. and sometimes it happens through scholarship they mm -hmm. choose the cream de la cream and allow them to be authorities that speak and teach on some of these false scientific discoveries and and principles mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, go so ahead the, yeah. so okay so I was just going to look at the next point here on false science undermining faith. You mm. had mentioned something along the lines of the theory of evolution. Yeah. This theory has been there for a long time and it's still being taught in our, in our schools today. Mm. And it is now supported by so many scientific facts. Um, I've, I've read articles saying that this particular relic is... Uh, 20,000 years old, and they will tell you that <laughs> yeah. the, the science supports it. Yes. There's other relic which is like a million years old, and they'll tell you the science what supports it. But our God has told us and given us an idea to how old this earth is. Yeah. And then you say, to yeah. them, how do you reconcile the two? You can't reconcile the two. Mm. So these are other avenues that the devil has used to do what? Yeah. To, to mess up our, and our in understanding. Fact, when, when people believe that lie, mm -hmm it actually withdraws their faith from the word of God. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no way you can believe that, 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 that theory of evolution and still believe the story of creation. Yeah. There's no way. And mix. neither will it help you to behave mm -hmm. in a moral way. Mm -hmm. Because if your foundation for original, the origin of species says it's survival of the fittest, fittest. Yeah. what are you going to do in your life? you will undermine others so that you are the one who survives. survives. And so what picture of God does it leave you thinking if there's ever a God, God in heaven? He's care. a tyrant. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. care. So when I preach the message that there's a loving God who sees your suffering, who sees the pain, it no longer makes sense to you because I've grown up, I've lived a life of survival. 
Mm. And where was this God when mm. I was going to survive? Where was this God when my Why would you died? demand a tithe from me when mm. I made my own money? Money, <laughs> exactly. So that, I guess maybe that point now justifies or explains rather uh, why we have all these questions that are taking place. Because the philosophy is saying survival of the fittest. Mm. That's the theory that, that is ongoing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, when we look at um, the way Protestants are now beginning to acquiesce and seem to reach out back to the system where their founders ran away, Mm -hmm. we are already seeing an indication from this chapter in terms of what are some of those steps and provisions Mm -hmm. that the evangelical system Mm -hmm. as well as the whole Christendom is actually doing and and beginning to warm up to what then the chapter says is a threat to our Mm -hmm. religious freedom. Mm -hmm. There are things that they are now doing. Mm-hmm. If you maybe you can share a few from that chapter. Let's let's, let's try and walk through the the step by step approach mm-hmm. of, of 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 this. Yeah. Genesis chapter eleven talks about a tower that has been built, the Tower of Babel. Mm. For that to take place, the Bible is very clear. Yeah. They had to be of one language. Mm. Keywords. They had to be of one language, yeah. so that they could all communicate and mm. understand. Yeah. And the Bible goes on to say that God realized this thing. Sometimes the Bible is very funny. Mm. The Bible says God realized these people, and God Himself says these guys are going to reach they are heaven. One. Yeah. Because they are one. They will mm. reach heaven. Therefore, let me come down and do it. Confuse their languages. So the the cartoon image in my mind here is God's on His throne. He's seeing that these people are actually one and they are going to reach heaven and over t- overrun the kingdom. Mm. But now here's the bigger picture that God wants us to know. He says that for, 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 for this to take place, the whole world needs to be in one mind. Mm. And right now what's taking place is a process they call ecumenism. Yeah. Coming together into one. How are they doing that? One mind, one currency, one economy. Eventually everything will lead to one leader, one world, one world government, new world order, yeah. new world order, all these things, mm. right? So I'm in the education sector right now, mm-hmm. and uh, our region, the Southern African region, has taken a stance to say, let's get our universities harmonized in terms of the curriculum. I like the word uh, you've used, mm. harmonized. Yes, back where I come from, they actually okay. uh, are saying 80% of the university degrees must be transferable, meaning your son, your daughter must be able to move from University A to University B mm. at the same level without any headaches because the curriculum is is the same. Mm. So education is playing its part towards ecumenism. Mm. Economy is playing its part towards ecumenism. Yeah. In the Southern African region, we have what? The Iran Monetary Union, mm. isn't it? In Europe, we have the, the Euro. The Euro, yeah. Right. So eventually, we're coming down to one economy. And globally, we have a one global currency for payments. The United States dollar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So eventually we're coming towards one. Please not Genesis chapter eleven. Mm. So for that to take place, there will eventually be one leader. And common sense tells you and me that one leader would not want to be mm. questioned. Mm. He would not want to have his authority undermined. Yeah. And here is a small sect of people was saying, yes, we see the one one world economy. Yes, we see the one school environment. Yes, we see these things. But I think where you're now trading de- dangerously mm. is on what? Mm. One world religion. Mm-hmm. That's where we're heading to as well because that must all speak into ecumenism. Yeah. And one world religion will say, let's agree on various points. Mm. Worship on Sunday, that's the easiest one. Mm. When I die, I go to heaven. Another easy one. Yeah. Miracles, yes. Does God heal? <coughs> yes, he does. We have examples of people mm-hmm. who have what? Gone through a healing process. Let's uh, 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 adopt all that. So mm. all these things will come to one doctrine. Come day of worship, the rabbi will meet the road. Yeah, yeah. And they'll say, no, 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 no. We cannot have two days of worship. Mm. Who are these people? How big are they? A minor sect. I mean, less than a, a, a billion, less than a million people worldwide. Mm. And here we've got six billion who have now accepted this thing. Yeah. I say, yeah. let's 
get rid of them. I mean, mm. is, it, is it a big deal that one person should die in the entire structure? You remember the earlier question? Yeah. It will come back yeah. again. Yeah. Better to save the whole nation. Exactly. And just eliminate a few bad apples. Exactly. So on a step-by-step -step approach, this is exactly what we'll find ourselves into. Mm. And for that to take place, laws need to be changed. Mm -hmm. Laws need to be introduced. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the painful law, Revelation 13, talks about the national or worldwide Sunday law. Mm. That will say, let us have one day of worship. Mm. And if you don't accept this one day of worship, these will be the consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and this is not a new agenda, by the way. Mm -hmm. it's, it comes from Constantine's days. Yes. AD 321. 321. Mm -hmm. The venerable day of the sun. Yeah. And there were steps they took to bring it about. It, mm -hmm. it didn't happen overnight. overnight just like that. And we are also seeing similar steps right now, just like what Constantine did back then. Firstly, uh, he, he put a day where people could choose. Mm -hmm. All right? And uh, it allowed people to rest on their Saturday, but also on their Sunday. Mm -hmm. And people were allowed to do their work but then there was continuously pressure to put this day uh, as the only day to be enforced. Yeah. All right? And there were now restrictions on labor. There were penalties that were included as the time went on for everyone to ditch the Jewish Sabbath and take the king's one. And so the observance of Sunday it was increasingly enforced, like you mentioned, through civil and Perfect. ecclesiastical yeah. uh, means. Mm -hmm. And then there was a fabrication of miracles, okay. fake mm -hmm. miracles mm -hmm. wow. that were uh, reported in support of Sunday's sanctity. The, the greatest one I ever read was that guy whom they say a metal bar was stuck in his hand and Ooh. for two years mm -hmm. he carried it because he went to work uh -huh. on Sunday. Sunday. And the other one was the guy who was hit by lightning uh -huh. because he was working on Sunday. You know, so yeah. miracles were fabricated to reinforce the sacredness of Sunday. Sunday. And then later on, there was clear enforcement uh -huh. to say you cannot. So we have a law which was there from way back. Way back. A sign of rebellion, uh -huh. which we know its mechanism right now is there yeah. because there are labor instruments and conventions that actually confirm that a, a, a shared communal day or a family day mm -hmm. must be set aside. Right. The Pope has also proclaimed his letter to say we must create a day that is protected by law mm -hmm. and he calls it a family day. Okay. And so there are movements right now. Project 2025 is a clear uh, project where they want in America by 2025 re reinstallation of the law of God and that it must be mandated by law, mm -hmm. that every state must display. So it might look like we're reverting back to what was there before historically, you know, protecting the heritage. But from these laws shall proceed a movement that many people are not seeing, and that's what this book is talking about, yeah. where many of our leaders are participating in setting up some of these, these policies, laws. some of these labor laws, and they don't even realize they are setting the framework for an instrument that will actually be used to persecute God's children in the end. And so the question maybe I would like you to, to address is, what evidence do we have that the change of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday was a deliberate act of rebellion to undermine the authority of Scripture and ultimately the authority of God over his day of rest. And how do we as Africans, how have we as Africans actually contributed to that narrative? What I know very quickly has to do with some of the literature that's available within the Catholic system. Mm. Literature within the Catholic system which speaks to the changes that took place. right? And the reasons for those changes, the majority of the reasons that you find has to do with Catholic tradition. 
right? I know of the, the catechism, which speaks about which is a true day, and the answer given there is the seventh day, Sabbath. The next question comes up saying, why then do we worship or maintain the first day? And the answer given there is because mm. universal and ecclesiastical authority was granted to the church to, to make those changes. Mm. So these are examples of documented evidences available for public consumption to read for themselves mm. to say this is the reason why we do what we do. Because the church has authority. The source of the authority is a matter for another discussion. But they say they have the authority mm. to make changes. They have the authority to change time, states, you name it. They have mm. the authority to do all of these things. Mm. So it's something for us to, 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 to research on as individuals, like you said at the beginning. Mm. Don't take our word for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Investigate. Be, investigate and, 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 and look at the literature for, for yourself mm. so that you draw out a conclusion for yourself. Mm. Mm. Exactly. And one of the things I noted as I read this section of the Sabbath mm-hmm. um, and how they brought in a change without scriptural authority. Yeah. There's no scriptural authority mm. for any Christian church uh-huh. to worship on a Sunday. And the only authority you get is what the Roman church did, yeah. for which all churches accept it, yeah. against any biblical authority. Jesus never said, because I woke up on Sunday, therefore I'm changing what was the case. Because the Sabbath was instituted long before there was sin. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with the death for sin or anything. It's just got to do with God being the creator. So true. That's it. I want to look at the spiritual side of that question now. Yeah. Because you you, you had mentioned um, the issue of uh, the spiritualism and the Mm -hmm. Sunday sacredness. There's a spiritual side that we, we need to touch on very, very briefly. Yeah. So if there's going to be a, 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 a joining force between the, the Catholic system and the spiritualists, what do you think would join them? Because their ultimate aim at the end of the day is Sunday legislation. Yeah, I, th- I, right. think, I think the glue or the, <laughs> the gel in between must be spiritual. It is very much spiritual. Yeah. So I want to suggest for further discussion and, yeah. and personal reading, the false understanding of the state of the dead mm-hmm. will be the major glue. Yeah, let's, it's let's, the tipping point. Yes. It's the pivot. So let's let's, let's yeah. do a small example, baby example. Mm-hmm. We have seen in the Bible where the witch of Endor supposedly brought back Samuel from the dead, mm. and supposedly was able to converse with Samuel, and the, the supposed Samuel was able to converse with Saul, and they had that discussion, right? So since we have seen that in the Bible, it's not a big thing for the devil to to replicate it. All right. So if your, 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 your close friend, your father, your mother, uh, very, very someone close and influential to you were to die, it is not a big deal for the devil to bring this person up from the grave, supposedly, okay. and hold a conversation with you. All right. And the part of the conversation, yeah. because our state of the dead message is being flawed, is I'm in heaven right now, and I am in communion with Jesus Christ. Mm. And Jesus Christ is looking upon us disappointed that we have not understood mm. the importance of changing from Sabbath, Saturday, yeah. to Sunday. Mm. So because of my com- constant communication with Christ, he has permitted me to come and have this discussion with you. Mm. To say, listen, my brother, my son, I have departed, yes, I know you are sad, but it will be a good idea for you to maintain the first day of Worship. Hmm. Now you're saying, Kito, are you not stretching the scriptures a little bit? Well, Paul warns us in Thessalonians. Yeah. He says himself that do not deviate from the message I have given you. Not even when an angel even comes. Even if an angel comes and preaches a message <laughs> different from this. Don't change. Don't change. Yeah. So Paul was fully aware that the devil... Is mm. able. He's impersonator. To do that. Yeah, he's yeah. an impersonator. And in the same chapter, Paul goes on a step further to say, the devil is able to transform himself yes, into, a, into an angel of light. Into an angel of light. Yeah. So it is not a far fetched thing. Mm. Not a far fetched thing at all to to, to 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 think that spiritualism will play a 
big part, especially mm. in the issue of the state of the dead. Yes. Where your loved ones will come back from supposedly heaven, yes. supposedly having a good time with Christ, mm. and supposedly having a message saying, Christ changed this thing when he rose from the dead. Yeah. Saying, let us now worship on the first day because of the resurrection mm. and mourning. Mm. So if we yeah. mess up this message of the state of the dead, Spiritualism will kick in very easily. Yes. And then the rest will just fall like dominoes. Mm. I want to encourage uh, the continent of Africa mm -hmm. to revisit this dialogue mm -hmm. in terms of the geopolitics for the end times. Mm -hmm. Because there's no beast that was mentioned coming out of Africa in the whole prophecies yeah. of Daniel and of Revelation. Mm -hmm. There was no beast in Africa. Yeah. Uh, could that explain why Africa has been plundered so much by many beast powers? Could mm -hmm. be. Maybe. Could be. Because yet in this continent of Africa, the history tells us that the largest number of Sabbath keepers, even today, mm -hmm. are on this, this continent, continent of Africa. And God has hidden his faith in this great continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. And Africans, perhaps through some cultural practices, their way of life, we have retained the biblical Culture. Not that mm -hmm. it has not been adulterated somehow mm -hmm. with time. It has been because the devil thrives on infiltrating systems and corrupting them. Mm -hmm. But I believe in these last days, mm -hmm. God is going to raise up out of this continent a body of people mm -hmm. that will stand by the biblical truth as we know it. So okay. I, I want Africans not to be afraid to stand up for God the God that we know created, and to teach that God to the world yeah. and remind Europe and remind America and remind the Asian tigers and the giants and the whatever that there is a God in heaven and he needs to be worshipped according to his word and that this word is a true word of God. And, and obviously there's talks around versions of the Bible and have you noticed how they all come back to Africa? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The Not Ethiopian true. Bible is one of the biggest, and even the one with the Apocrypha and all of those, the Maccabees and the like, yeah, they all Africa. come back to the African, the old system of knowledge, the Egyptian hieroglyphics and all its wisdom. It's in Africa. Africa. So Africa has definitely been a battlefield for faith, mm -hmm. and I believe. Don't ask me where I got this verse from. Mm -hmm. I believe deeply, based on my calling that there is a divine voice mm. that God is raising out of Africa. Africa. That's going to stand up and resist all of these systems and push mm. back. Now, I Before want us to... Yes. My apologies mm -hmm. for that. In Debele. Yeah. What, how do you call Saturday in Debele? Isabat. Uh, before you go there, uh -huh. in Debele, in Debele, fair, fair. Yeah, um, um, Yes. What does that mean? Um, um, to stop. Yeah, to finish. To finish. Yeah. Why do you think our Ndewele ancestors used that word? Mm, to bring to an end the Time. week's work. Yeah. Yeah. And to rest. <laughs> yes. So there's a lot In of fact, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Shona's also, you have a very particular word. Friday is uh, Chishanu. But Saturday is Mugovera. Mugovera, eh? Yeah, Mugovera, which means a day of fellowship. Okay. And sharing. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some, some truths that yeah. we're hidden in the African continent yes. that we need to dig a little bit deep. I, I'm trying to remember this other African nation whereby mm -hmm. um, a, a, a white person in the in the vernacular of that nation, please yeah. forgive me for going, but a white person in the vernacular of that nation is called Sunday Man. Mm. Yeah, because they they put in the cult. The cult. Sunday cult. Exactly. They yes. always believed in the, the yeah. Saturday as a, as yes. a day of, of, yeah. of worship. Mm. But uh, basically... Um, and uh, actually the group in KZN, um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name, the guys who put on the well, leather skin, their leader says he was given a vision by God that, this, that Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord. And the Shembe people, that's the okay. name. The okay. Shembe people keep the Sabbath because I read that their leader was shown. And many of the apostolic churches across South... In fact, if you, if you look at the continent of Africa, Southern Africa has the largest number 
billion, millions of people that actually keep the Sabbath day holy. Mm -hmm. And so it's protected within our cultures. And I think historically it has been like that. But I want us to bring this to a close mm -hmm. by looking at... Um, I think we mentioned this in passing a little bit. We read the scripture. Mm -hmm. Revelation 13, verse 14 to 18 is going to become a critical text for us to understand. We, re we talked about it, causing yeah. and causing and causing. It's a critical verse. But then I want us to then discuss it in the context of how will this actually happen? Because the biblical text will know it. Mm -hmm. And the question I have for us to discuss, and again, it's clear in this chapter actually, mm -hmm. what is the Roman church, huh? mm -hmm. the leopard-like beast, waiting for? What is, what is it waiting to, to, to see established in America for it to begin to take advantage to establish the Sunday law? I don't know if I'll answer your, uh, that question, but I'm just going to use the verses as I'm seeing them here. Yeah. Um, there is a step-by-step -step approach, uh, process that will come through. So let mm -hmm. me read from, from verse 11. Mm -hmm. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth mm -hmm. that had two horns like a lamb mm -hmm. and spake like a dragon. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, the USA. And he exercised all power of the first beast before him. That is the papal system. And while you're there, uh -huh. the, uh, he exercises all, all the power. Mm -hmm. When you look at verse 2, who gave the first beast that power? The dragon. Infiltration by the dragon into this system. system. Yes. Yeah. And you will see as you read on who it spake like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, read on. And causes them mm -hmm. that dwell... Therein to worship which beast? The, the first, first beast, beast whose, whose deadly, deadly wound was healed. healed. Mm -hmm. right? And he does great wonders. Okay. So that he made fire come down from heaven mm -hmm. onto earth in the sight of men. men. So very quickly, let's interpret this prophecy quickly. Mm -hmm. Another beast, the USA, mm -hmm. coming up um, with two horns, roughly 1794, 1798, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. It is the, the power of the first beast which came before him. Who is that beast? The papal, papal system, system before yeah. it, it suffered that deadly wound by the, the French nation. Mm -hmm. Right? We continue. And this beast uh, makes fire come down from heaven. It shows the birth of fallen Protestantism, mm. false miracles, and mm. what have you. So this is a miracle-working nation. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we've got how many religions that work here? The first beast yeah. and the second beast. Now we've got two mm -hmm. religions. We continue. Mm -hmm. And deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of what? Those the miracles. miracles. So who is doing the deception? The, the, second, the beast. second beast, yeah. Through miracles. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Which had which which he had power to do mm -hmm. in the sight of which beast? The first beast. Aha. But remember the earlier verses say what? That first beast had a wound. Wound, yeah. yeah. But now the beast is back again. That gives us a timeline of what we're working with. All right. In answering the question, the step-by-step -step approach. So the first one is still existing. It's still existing. All right. We continue. Saying to them that dwell on the earth, mm. they should make, look at that word, mm -hmm. an image, image to the beast. beast. Okay? Mm -hmm. Keep that word. If you're looking at the KJV, it says yeah. image to, to the, beast. the beast. I'll come back there. Not image of, but image to. The of is coming later. All right. Uh -huh. All right. Which had, which had the wound by the sword, sword. and did live. Yes, yeah. 15. Mm -hmm. And he had power to give life unto the image of, of oh. the beast. The one which was to the beast. Uh -huh. Now it's of the, the beast. beast. All right. And that the image of the beast should speak and cause many that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So we're still doing a timeline here. Mm -hmm. Let's walk through the timeline again. First beast, yeah. 538 AD to 798, mm -hmm. it gets a wound. Mm -hmm. Second beast, it grows up at the fall of the first beast. Yeah. Right? The second beast does miracles, wonders, 
and then it yeah. calls people to do what? Worship, Worship yeah. the first beast. beast. Mm. Right? So that means the first beast is now coming back bit by bit. Mm-hmm. Right? We continue. Mm-hmm. Then it says there is an instruction that they should make a what? An image, image to two. the beast. Now, image yeah. two suggests worship. Image two, keep that in mind, mm. suggests worship. Yeah. It suggests something to do with homage. Mm-hmm. What would pay homage to this beast? If I make an mm. image to Melusi, I'm mm-hmm. giving reverence to Melusi. Yeah. The answer is Sunday sacredness. We continue. Mm. Continue. Mm-hmm. Which had the wound and it did live. All right. All right. Now look at verse 15. Mm-hmm. And he had power to give life unto the image of, of the, the beast. beast. Now, image of is a photocopy. It's not an issue of homage anymore. It's now a photocopy. A photocopy of what? Mm-hmm. The original beast. All right. What was the original beast? 1798, 538, that beast that took place during that 1260-year period. Yeah. That's it, the image. One of its biggest characteristics was that it merged ecclesiastical and political power. There you go. In the head of the state. There you go. So the image of the beast is what the merging of state and church. Yes. Image to the beast is your Sunday sacredness. Because image to is worship. Mm. Image of is a copy of what was there before. The structure. The structure. So it's the structure and the software. Exactly. All those things are coming back again. Mm. That's why the chapter ends by saying what? He came back again. Let's look at how it, it concludes. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, uh, and, called, then, and again, there's a bringing in here mm-hmm. um, of an economic system that will be used. Mm-hmm. All right, yes. a system of commerce, exactly. of trading mm-hmm. that will be so centrally controlled that it will make every man not to be able to buy and sell unless yes. they have a mark. Yes. So we're going to get into that. Mm-hmm. And I think for now, what's very clear is that the framework the beast wants to begin to attack religious liberty mm-hmm. is number one it's clear corruption of scriptures yes. which then results in a warped and weakened religious experience mm-hmm. and understanding of god and in related to that the structure must be distorted yes christ must not be seen by people but human beings come in mm-hmm. as your intermediaries mm-hmm. even Jesus' salvation is not complete unless the mother is there which is the whole structure of changing the law of God and bringing in a human being as a deity, then there is the merging of certain structures, the church and the state into one. We are seeing that happening in America right now. Mm -hmm. And even in our own countries here, we are seeing it happening. And when, when Zimbabwe went through the political upheavals and Mugabe was being set aside. Mm-hmm. We know which church was there to do the intermediations of political systems. Right now in America, the debate around the judges, the jury in America, transitioning from Protestant, Baptist, to have a significant Catholic representation tells us they are preparing. For that All right? So that, and, and look at even the parliamentary Look at even the presidential candidates. Mm. So the system is, there are machinations to bring about in America, which is a global power we can't deny of. Mm -hmm. The the global policeman is America. Mm -hmm. They they are the The country with the largest bases around the world militarily. Mm -hmm. And most of the modern wars have been fought because America has its hand with its own other global political systems such as NATO and the like. And what we are seeing is that this leopard beast, typical of a leopard, Mm. will only attack when it's within range. And it knows. It's calculated. It's disguised. It's hidden. People don't see. But once there is a union 
of the American Senate, the upper and the lower house, and the church now has strength to make laws, mm. then the Sunday law movement will come in and our religious liberty will be at stake. Yeah. And that's what we are seeing and that's what I'm hearing. Every time I hear the current presidential elections happening, every president who has come in in America has an agenda to chip away on the word of God. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And even if they speak of restoring the law, it's within the bigger agenda of saying it is better for these few to die, for the greater okay. ones to be nice. saved. Maybe give us your closing remarks as we end the threat to religious liberty. Your take-home message. My take-home message is, is a fairly simple one. Mm -hmm. God has given us free will. And God wants us to use his free will for his glorification. Yeah. But being given that free will, we should not, be, we should not put our heads in the sand and believe that it will be there forever. Mm. Unfortunately, to say it will be withdrawn, as hinted in Revelation 13, yeah. that some things now will be caused. I mean, just look mm. at our COVID situation just a few years ago. Yeah. There are so many laws that were so restrictive. You can't go out to the gate. You can't mm. move more than 5Ks. Mm. If, if, if the world leaders could throw in such laws, which, by the way, mm. please note, were for the greater good. And they were not removed afterwards. They were not removed afterwards. It's very possible that sometime in the future, another law for the greater good mm. will also be introduced. So we need to be alert, alive to those realities. In the meantime, yeah. let's worship our God freely. Let's mm. worship our God to the best of our consciences, to the best of our dictates. Let's worship our God using the scriptures as they are guided. Because one day, this mm. freedom will be withdrawn from us. Yeah. yeah. Thank mm. you so much, my brother. And what a powerful discussion of chapter... 35 of the book, The Great Controversy. I encourage you to read it. We've put a link in the description. Learn these things for yourselves. Don't take our word for it because you have been given the truth. So search and understand what's happening in these last days and find yourself favor with God because you will stand for that which is true. Can you pray for us as we close? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the study. We thank you for what you've allowed us to, to unravel the depth that we have gone to. We pray forgiveness in case we have erred. Dear Lord, we did not mm. intend to do that. But we pray that, dear Lord, you can do for us that we can't do for ourselves with regards to this all-important message. Mm. I pray for ourselves, our hearers, our listeners to this, this, this recording. We all want to have a closer walk with you, we want to be close to you, dear Lord. Mm. Prepare us for your soon coming. Inscribe our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. For we pray in his mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.